celebration of the uh, life work of David Bowie. Because uh, he's an unknowable man. Any kind of yeah. tribute will be incomplete due to the fact that he was such a wide ranging figure. To try and get his whole career would be a flaw. To try and just sum up his life would be a flaw. So we're going to do the, the top 30, in our opinion, David Bowie songs. So would you like to kick off with what your choice of uh, the 30th greatest David Bowie oh song is? God. Well, I'm cheating a bit. You're cheating a bit? Number 30. Yeah. I've got three songs. Three songs. I think they're kind of part and parcel-ish. Alright. Because we're representative of... The thing with David Bowie is that his late period career was great. It was great. I, I can't emphasise enough. Albums like Outside and Next Day and Black Star, Heathen and Reality are all 100% worth listening to. And you need to listen to them. They are great. Yeah. Well, fortunately, compared to the rest of the discography, they're not quite as good as kind of what came before. Yeah, but I want to make sure they do get their due. I've not done that. I think mine, apart from a couple, they're pretty much all 70s and um, yeah. Red Stamp songs. I think there's a couple songs from the 90s and a couple songs from the 80s, but I want to make sure at least a few of them got some due. Okay. So I'll pick my favourite song from Sunday, sorry, from uh, Heathen, uh, Outside and Black Star. Okay. I think one of the three best uh, late period David Bowie's. So the first one is album opener Sunday. Sunday. From Heaven, which is a very cool opening. It's very weird, very atmospheric. Doesn't really get going until the last minute. Yeah. But it's a great reintroduction to David Bowie. Number two is The Motel, which comes in the middle of uh, Outside. Um, a very dark, very gloomy song. Um, and very atmospheric. Uh, it's fairly awesome. And then from Black Star, Lazarus. Lazarus. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Those ones. Well, my number 30 is one that most people would probably rate a lot higher, Changes. <laughs> it's pretty much the sort of essential song about who he is. I just think there are 29 better ones. It's a great, it's a really great song. I think the production's a bit tinny as well on the album. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think that general about Hunky Oh, Hunky yeah. yeah. That holds it down a little bit. Um, but yeah, really great uh, song. It's just a classic pop single. Yeah, absolutely. Probably yeah. could have done with a bit of better production, but as an actual song itself, really, really great. Yeah. Alright, so what's your 29? Uh, the Oddity at the End of Heroes, The Secret Life of Arabia. Arabia, Arabia. I love, love this song. It's really... Uh, I love it, especially in the context of the album, yeah. where you have this very, very moody second side of these kind of strange instrument, uh, instrumentals. And then you have this kind of bizarre, mock, exotic pop song, which uh, recalls what's going to come next with Lodger. Yeah. Um, uh, it's, <clears throat> it's bizarre. The, the Bowie's vocals are strange. I don't really get what it's about, um, but I love the instrumentation, I love the production, and I, I, I love his singing on it. Yeah. Um, secret, secret, evergreen. So, what? What's going on? <laughs> and that little riff that. Feels like it could be like in a 70s psychedelic retelling of uh, Lawrence of Arabia. Yeah. So, yeah, I love Secret Life of Arabia. Well, my uh, 29 is actually off the same album, uh, Beauty and the Beast. Oh, yeah, great opening. Absolutely yeah. great uh, opening. Robert Fripp at, uh, at his best in terms of yeah. guitar work. Um, and, yeah, just a really great, the first time strange... That, 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 sorry, that, that first take of Robert Fripp yeah. on the guitar, his first take in six years after not playing the guitar since the collapse of uh, King the early 70s King Crimson. Yeah, uh, phenomenal. Yeah, yeah just an absolutely great song. What's your 28? Uh, Black Star. Black Star. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the doomy, gloomy opening of uh, David Bowie's final album, which perfectly lays out what the album is going to be about. Uh, I love the way it changes key halfway through to something else entirely. And it's a song that really only David Bowie could have uh, pulled off. I have a strange, bizarre lyrics as well. Yeah. You know, I have no idea what the candle in the middle of Armand is all about, but I sure do love it. Yeah. My 28 is uh, Oh You Pretty Things. Oh, yeah. Ironically, the, the song After the Changes on there, Hunky Dora. Oh, yeah. Again, it's just a really great uh, song. It's got his first use of sort of Nietzschean philosophy. Oh, yeah. yeah. Actually, it might be some on uh, The Man Who uh, Sold the World. Make way for the homo superior. Yeah, yeah. but it's his most explicit at that point, at the very least. Yeah. Uh, really great uh, build up to that really great chorus. Uh, yeah. Oh, you pretty things. things. Brilliant piano from um, <laughs> Rick Wakeman. <laughs> My favourite man, Rick Wakeman. I never thought I'd be saying that. <laughs> some great piano from Rick Wakeman. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, uh, absolutely great song. What a bit of a hidden one. Uh, people yeah, should check yeah. it out. Not a yeah. very well known one, but yeah, you're uh, 28. 
27. 27 even, ah. Uh, is the album closer to station to station, Wild is the Wind. Oh, I love this song. Yeah, it's br absolutely brilliant Nina song. Nina Simone cover. Yeah, yeah. Um, clearly a song that David Bowie really cared about. Um, you know, c coming from an album when he was at his most, like, like <laughs> stoned out of his mind and just at his lowest point in terms of his life and singing this kind of beautiful song, you know, Love Me, Love Me, Say You Do. Um, our love is like the wind, and I'm sure that like uh, the Nina and Simone version is a lot more uh, so like sultry and like yeah. uh, slower and yeah. But David Bowie turns it into like this really empty, vacuous song, which more desperate, more desperate. Yeah, you you get. I think I said this in the review, but you get this feel that like he's uh, uh, he's got this urge for something. He doesn't understand at all what it is, but he's got this desire to try and achieve something, get something, get love, but he can't because he's. Yeah, in a shit place. So, love wild is a wind. Okay, um, I've got China Girl. His cover uh, of the Iggy Pop song. His cover of the Iggy Pop song he co-wrote for <laughs> the Iggy Pop. So very Byzantine uh, <laughs> production <laughs> schedule for this one. But yeah, really great pop song. Yeah, it's not as weighty as um, it, as even the ones that are below it. Yeah, but it just has a really great, uh, really great vocals. One of the just things that came out of you know people talk about David Bowie's life and whether a song, if China Girl was released today, yeah, would it be regarded as being racist? <laughs> Did you get one? Probably. Yeah, it does have that kind of almost like. Oh yeah, that yeah, that honky tonk guitar sound. It is a little bit like. That, only the eighties you could do that. Yeah, but ignoring the slightly racist riff. It's great. It is, I love the song. I love David. I love his singing on that. Yeah, it's not on my list, but I do love China Girl. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I just want to say, like, I, my my list was like at fifty plus songs. Yeah. So I really had to whittle this down to get it to thirty. But Ch Ch I love China Girl. It's a great song. Yeah. It was very difficult leaving stuff out. Like, I I left out Space on it. <gasps> I have as well, actually. I know it's amazing, that, isn't it? Like, that's yeah. how good these thirty songs are. Okay. 26. Yeah. So mine's also from Let's Dance, my only one from Let's Dance actually. Yeah. And that's album opener Modern Love. Brilliant song. Yeah. Um, get to the church on town, life is happy. It's a perfect 80s pop song. Yeah. In the style that David Bowie could do by combining blues guitar with uh, kind of more soulful, funky backing band. Yeah. He, made, he fused together with this really strange sound. It's never really been replicated. But there was so much of a production style that Let's Dance laid out was copied by pretty much every pop band for the rest of the 80s. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think Modern Love is, is just an excellent song. I love its sense of urgency. Uh, I love the sense of rhythm. You know, you get a feeling of the characters racing and running to get to his, uh, trying to get to church on time. Yeah. Um, love it. It's great. I love him exploring the whole idea of what Modern Love is and uh, just a great song. I love yeah. Modern Love. Uh, mine's actually, my 26th is actually one you've already said, The Secret Life of Arabia. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah. Uh, for the exact same uh, reason, so yeah. you are 25th. Um, from Station to Station again, Golden Years. Boom, bo 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 yeah. Great Don't song. Don't you feel like life's taking you nowhere? Angel! Love that. that, that I'm hooked instantly. And the weird backing vocals of boom, bo 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 baby. Um, I'll stick together for a thousand years. Go oh, keep you contained in these golden years. Yeah. Oh, what about the baby? It's Perfect a song. Great song. Yeah. Great riff. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. So uh, my twenty uh, fifth is a Lan insane nineteen thirteen. Oh, yeah. Do you have you have for four years? <laughs> yeah. For nineteen thirty eight to nineteen seven. Question mark. Yeah. Question mark. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. This is a brilliant song. I love the piano uh, solo riddle. Yeah. I love the the, the backing band for. The, the, the Spanish on Mars was such a brilliant backing band, they were so solid in their rhythm section. Yeah. I managed to be like, boom, 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 boom. While the, the pianist, I think Mick Garson, he's just got it fucking insane. Like, um, David Bowie apparently asked him to do a solo on the song, and he was like, okay. David was like, come on, come on, show me what you've got. And he was like, all right, I'll go a little bit more weirder. No, come on, come on, what have you got? He's like, alright, well I've got this. It might end your career though. And he's like, <laughs> great, do it! <laughs> and that's a solo that's on the, uh, that's on the album. Because this is one of uh, two songs, I, like Aladdin's saying I think it's a straight album. It's, it's just like your Ziggy Stardust again. 
Yeah. It's really, it's great songs. It's just really, you know, uh, it's just a frustrating uh, album. It's not something completely new. Yeah. But this yeah. song and the other song are, is, they're, they're great songs. They're, they're peaks of his sort of 70s stuff. They're really, really great. And they pretty much epitomise glam rock, really. Oh, definitely, yeah. Yeah, so what's your 24th? Um, from the album Low, it's A New Career in a New Town which has been instrumental at the end of side one of Low. Yeah. Um, I've always, always loved this instrumental. Uh, the harmonica sound, the um, piano sound. Uh, ding, 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 ding. And it, it's that kind of perfect soundscape. Yeah. But um, it, it comes really nice at the end of uh, side one of Low. After these songs all about pain and hurt and suffering and what he's been through. It's nice to have a song which there's some kind of life in there, you know, obviously the song could be, you know, David Bowie escaping from LA, going to Berlin and find, you know, recovering from his uh, drug addictions and all this kind of stuff. And it's kind of a nice musical piece. Yeah. It's a really great little piece. Okay. Yeah. Well, mine is um, pretty much the opposite of that really short instrumental, uh, Whip for the Circle. Oh. The, the ten minute yeah. epic. That's, that's that, not on um, here, but I love that song. <laughs> that kicks off um, Man Who Sold the World. Yeah. It's just brilliant. It's it's a completely unhinged. Yeah. Uh, Man who sold the world's a really interesting album. It's more interesting. Uh, it has a lull in the middle, but like the highs of it are incredible. Yeah, yeah. And it's just a really bizarre, strange sound. Yeah. They never really do any uh, anything like that again. Sort of metal. It's like like like, oh, it's, like uh, <coughs> it's like yeah, black Black Sabbath filtered through David Bowie. Yeah. yeah. It's really weird. Yeah. It's really weird, but this sort of is just it's just a completely unhinged, brilliant song. Yeah. Yeah. Um. My next board is uh, Word on a Wig. Brilliant. Number 23 from uh, Station to Station. Again? Again, number, <laughs> I love Station to Station. Yeah. Um, again, it's like a six minute one. I love the uh, opening. It's a Then the drums kicking. Um, and again, it, it's a song about. Um, Discovering and uh, finding something to, to, to believe in. Yeah. Uh, only do you believe in it? I, I don't know. I don't know what conclusion David reaches, but the, the lyrics that he's singing are, are, are just phenomenal on, on this song. Um, you know, Lord, I kneel and offer you my word on a wig, and I'm trying hard uh, to bring them all into your scheme of things. Um, it's later than the old man, yada yada yada. And it's just all, all these songs about trying to prove your devotion to somebody through any means. Possible, yeah. and I love the way he sings the opening. You know, in this age of grand illusion, you walked into my life like out of a dream. Um, I don't need to hesitate, uh, but you forced your way into my scheme of things. Yeah. You say we're growing, growing day by day. Um, just really, really cutting lyrics. Really clever. Really great. Okay. Well, um, mine is um, fascination. Fascination. One of the best songs off of um, Young Americans, which is a brilliant album. Um, I also uh, have a fondness for this because I used to listen to it repeatedly because it was on GTA Vice City. <laughs> oh, yeah. So you yeah. drive around all the time and then you just have like, Fascination in background oh, when you're mowing yeah. people down. It was brilliant. I think one of the underrated elements of that album, I just want to kind of throw it out there, yeah. um, is the backing vocals. Yes. Um, they are brilliant for the whole album and they sing in a way which they wouldn't have done on, tra on a traditional soul album. Yeah. Um, you listen to them, there's this great interview and they're talking about the song right, you know, doing it all the right way, never gonna let it back. Listen to that song again and listen to how complex the backing vocals are. You know, one time, one time, get back, right back, da, 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 da. And the way they do it, it's absolutely amazing. I mean, there's this great interview on this David Bowie documentary made a few years back, and they're talking about how complicated it was to do that backing vocals and to build up to the crescendo and uh, what David was trying to do on, on the album. And, uh, yeah, l l listen to write again and listen to the backing vocals because they are absolutely phenomenal. Yeah. I'd say my fascination. Fascination! A little part of me! Whoa, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's great, I, I love it. Um, they're the really underrated saviours of young Americans in my opinion. Otherwise the whole idea of this uh, um, really rich, soulful backing band with this quite detached white boy voice yeah. wouldn't have worked as well without that amazingly lush backing vocals, uh, you know, backing David Bowie's voice. So yeah, yeah I, I agree with you about fascination. Yeah. Um, my 22 is one of my all time favourite CD songs. It's Driving Saturday from uh, Aladdin so, Sane. Wow. This is yeah. a bizarre song. I, I, I fucking love this song. They do uh, Yeah, 
gee, it's hot. Let's go to bed. It's just like it's so seedy, and like I love the uh, I love the use of the, of the uh, I love it when songs use kazoos. Oh it's yeah. A kazoo, like, <laughs> it's quite. It's, it's really funny. I think um, it's it's really cheesy. It's almost like this um, uh, like kid for the first time. Come on, let, come, come back with me. And he doesn't know what he's doing. It's it's quite romantic and quite childish. And then the middle bit's great. Where it's like his name was always Bobby. Ba boom boom wah. Um, and he'd sigh like triple wonder kid. Like the way he sings it is, I love it. Um, and yeah, it's like this really. It's like it's like a song out of the fifties, but again done through David Bowie. A really seedy like um, yeah. And it's worth it just for the line. I say, gee, it's hot. Let's go to bed. <laughs> it's like, perfect. Love, love driving Saturday. Driving Saturday. Yeah. So what are we on twenty two. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> my uh, my twenty two is um, a song that um, a little bit cheesy. Mine, it works fashion. Fashion? Turn to the left? Yeah. Off of uh, Scary Monsters uh, and Super Creeps. Oh, yeah, and Super Creeps. Yeah. Is like it, it. No, is it, is it actually called Scary Monsters or is it Scary Monsters? It's called and Scary Monsters and Super Creeps. Yeah, because the song yeah. is just Scary Monsters. Yeah. Right? yeah. But yeah, so it's the um, end of side one yeah, to yeah. Scary Monsters. Uh, mm. And just a perfect pop. It also has one of the best David Bowie uh, videos. Oh, yeah, yeah. Where yeah. it's like him going to the left, and then like, the whole band does it and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> do, 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 fa, 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 fa. Fashion. Yeah, great backing vocals in that one as well. Also, um, people have seen a lot of political commentary in it. Oh, yeah. And he's saying, you know, turn to the left, and then everyone oh, turns to the left, yeah, and yeah, that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, yeah, turn to the left, turn to the right. I suppose it's, it has both meanings, That's obviously, it. of um, left wing and right wing. That's but it. It's just a great pop song. It works perfectly. And it's got another amazing. Uh, is it Robert Fripp doing the solo in this song? Yes, it's, a bit, Carlos? Weird, it's a bit weird on Scary Monsters because it's a whole mixture. But like Pete Townsend's on. Scary Monsters. <laughs> uh, this also, it's very collaborative that one, so it's hard to know what Robert Fripp does on that one. But yes, uh, fashion my twenty-two. Okay, my twenty-one is the title cut from the man who sold the world. Brilliant, amazing yeah, song. Yeah, great song. I think one of the cleverest uses of percussion I've ever heard in a song. Like that corkscrew sound, and, and that's constantly playing. And the uh, uh, the, the lyrics, you know, we passed along the thing. It spoke wasn't well. It's, it's really, I love the phasing on his voice and uh, although I wasn't there, he said he was my friend. I don't know who the man who sold the world was or why he's selling the world, but um, it's it's a very atmospheric, very creepy song. Yeah. Um, covered by Nirvana, of course. Um, but the man who sold the world. It's a perfectly fine version, but the Bowie ones just you can't beat it. Yeah. So my uh, my twenty one, I think this has probably the best guitar, one of the either one of the best or the best guitar solos ever. Moon Age Daydream. Oh yeah. yeah. That was that um, bit. <laughs> I can't remember what that is. It where, it's where he goes uh, freak out. Isn't far it? out. Far out. That's <laughs> it. And then it starts going. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll, yeah. Yeah, and uh, one of the greatest uh, opening lines of song ever. I'm an alligator, I'm a mama papa coming for you, I'm, I'm a, a space invader, invader. I'll be a rolling roll bitch, bitch for you. you. That's just... what. Who could have thought of something as amazing as that? And not only that, but like sing it like where you're not laughing. Yeah. I like, you know, like, like I, like that's fucking stupid. Like only David Bowie could have sung lines like that and sold them. Yeah. Um, yeah, I love Moon Age Daydream. Moon Age Daydream is amazing. One of the, one of the highlights of, uh, of Ziggy Stardust. Uh, and just an absolutely great. It's amazing because it works so well within the concept of the album, but it works perfectly just as a song yeah. by itself. So your number uh, twenty. 